major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits. Hello and welcome to this edition of Able to Learn Air, the one and only program that uh, for the last eight seasons has been focusing on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able, both in Vermont and beyond. We would like to thank our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel, and OSEM Products Israel, with us to discuss many, <clears throat> many important topics involving people with special needs is Joshua Smith, Executive Director of Green Mountain Support Services. Welcome to Able to Learn Air again. Thank you, Lawrence, and uh, thank you, Arlene, You're for having welcome. me come back. Yep. And, and we wanted to, uh, you asked me to come here to talk a bit about our, our Cerebral Palsy Conference yes. that we, yeah. we host, uh, that we're able to put on uh, every year. It's our fourth annual Cerebral mm -hmm. Palsy Conference. Wow. And it originally started as a, as a dream of, a f and uh, the Cerebral Palsy Conference started originally as um, one of the people we provide services for, Jimmy, who always wanted to go to a Cerebral Palsy Conference. So we said, yeah, and sure. And there was none in Well, Vermont. we said, sure, that's the easy. We can, we can totally do that, you know? And so we did some research and found out that the closest cerebral palsy conference is in California. The second closest, well, and then the Besides second. Besides New York, because they had you, United Cerebral Palsy conferences. And, um, they haven't for, they, we, they, if they did, they, did, they haven't had them in the past decade or so. Mm -hmm. So then we also looked, and the, the second closest one was in, was in uh, London. So there's wow. nothing on the entire East Coast to actually, the, a conference that specializes in, in working right. and promoting and people sharing <coughs> ideas to, that involve cerebral palsy. Right. So we started off very local. We started off, we did it in Morrisville for the first couple of years. Then we decided to open it up a, little, a bit larger, and we had it in uh, to all of Vermont, and uh, and we had that in uh, last year in Stowe, and we just got consistent, consistent uh, push from other people that are that live with or people who work around cerebral palsy wanted it to be more accessible for for the Greater New England area. So this year we're actually having it host in Hartford, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and. And in Hartford, Connecticut, because it's close, or we're looking for a place that's accessible for the most amount of people. So the most amount of people in in the East Coast, because everybody everybody that we talk to that, as I say, that that either has cerebral palsy or who or who works around or wants to learn more about cerebral palsy, the closest place for, for a conference is in California. Mm -hmm. So we. We, we found that, the, that you know, you always look when you do conferences, looking for destination places that you want to find a place that's easily accessible, a place with an airport or a place that has a train station, a place that's, that, that, is, that is, as I say, easiest for, for people to go to. And one of those, you're talking about your, your big hub places, like your Boston, your New York, your D.C., and uh, your... Hartford. So there's some of these places that actually is easy to get to that actually has an airport nearby who also has a, a pretty good train station nearby. Mm -hmm. and we want to kind of still keep it within, you know, or close in our geographic area. And so we're, we're very fortunate enough to connect with the, the Holiday Inn in Hartford, Connecticut. And we're going to have it on October, October 7th. They're providing trans uh, accommodations for people as well? They have, they, there's discounts for people who are there. We, 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 book, we blocked out, it's called like blocking off some rooms. Mm -hmm. So we have some rooms that are blocked off for people to able to, for people to get a, a, a significant discount to, to stay there if they're coming for the conference itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we're also very fortunate to have uh, uh, Michael Bortolotto who is, uh, who it's, who's gonna be our new keynote speaker. And he's from, he's from Canada. He's, He's a he's a very well known uh, he's a very well known uh, 
a motivational speaker. He's had books written out and everything like that, and he's had a lot of things that are able for. Uh, and we re and we reached out to him because we knew that he would be a great addition to to our to our guest speaker list uh, for the area. And so he's he's flying in. He's from the western part of Canada. Wow. So he's coming in, and he's going to be our our keynote speaker. Wow. And we are also very fortunate to have Advanced Wheels, which is a, a company based out of Connecticut that provides uh, mobility, mobility options for, for people that are in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. They actually have some very good accessible vans. And uh, they are a premier, uh, they are a premier place to go to if you're looking mm -hmm. for either to trying to buy accessible vans or via the rent or being able to provide some of those some of those assistances to get around with. Uh, so they are our platinum sponsor this year and we're very mm. grateful to them. We also have we also have some great breakout sessions that mm -hmm. are coming. Explain for people who don't know uh, what's a breakout session. So usually when you go to a conference you'll have a keynote speaker who will kind of do the the initial discussion and might last for either an hour to 90 minutes of of talking about the, the, the theme of advocacy that we're having this year, uh, talking about self-advocacy and ad advocacy is going to be, is, is our basically kind of one of our, our major themes this year. And, and he'll be talking about that. Then we're going to have some breakout sessions. After that, it'll be these, uh, the, these little presentation and sessions. That are, we're going to have nine total this year. Which is uh, which is a everything you know, to do with cerebral palsy or cere yeah uh, uh, all about how so and and <coughs> the people who come to these events that, that come to our our conference are mostly folks uh, that that as I say that have cerebral palsy who are who might be parents guardians or friends of people with cerebral palsy or it could be people who support people with cerebral palsy and and we see now in our fourth year we have we're, it looks we still have people that came years before coming back again. So it's almost a point where people use this, utilize this time as almost a reunion mm -hmm. atmosphere to say, yeah. hey, I didn't see you since last year. Right, yeah. So it's this, this opportunity for people to come together again. And, and what, we're, what we're talking about, so these breakout sessions are these sessions where they, they're, they're, smaller, they're, they're smaller presentations that are off into some other rooms um, that specialize in a uh, in, in any specific chosen topics, mm -hmm. we have uh, coming there. Where we have about, as you say, we have about nine breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. um, when we have some pretty large agencies that are nationally recognized agencies that are that are that are hosting some of those, we have mm -hmm. um, that that NADSP, which we've talked to about before, the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, and uh, John Raphael, who's the Director of Education and Training there, he's coming in, and he's gonna be talking about informed decision making. Mm -hmm. we, also have, um, we also have John Quinn, who was our keynote speaker from the year before. Oh, you remember, he wrote that book. Yeah, he wrote a book, book award-winning yeah. author who yeah, has yeah. cerebral palsy. Uh, he, uh, was in the military and he's done a lot of great things. He's coming back uh, to do a keynote speak. Mm -hmm. He's coming out to do that as well. Not a keynote speak, sorry, as a breakout session. Oh wow, that's nice. Yep, and we also have we also have Roy Gerstenberger, who's from First Person Services. Mm. And uh, uh, what's First Person Services? He's also it's a, it's a consulting training group that works with people with uh, intellectual disabilities, works with agencies to to learn about you know to learn and, and teach about person-centered thinking practices and mm -hmm. teaching person-centered thinking skills. Mm. Um, and he's going to be doing something along the lines of doing a breakout session on how to promote choice and and and. Uh, how to promote choice uh, for for people with intellectual disabilities mm -hmm. and, and to help people learn that you know you know people are people and treat and 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 learning how to uh, create an ad create this attitude that that you know being in charge of your own decision making being in charge of your own life being the fact that I have cerebral palsy um, you know there used to be um, this is a personal opinion question there used to be like telethons years ago and People used to feel sorry for people with special needs. Uh, what is um, mis the misconceptions around people with special needs when 
people first meet them, you know, going to conferences, being professional, et cetera? Well, I think the, ma the main piece of it, too, is, like that is ultimately is that we live in a diverse community. We live in a, the diversity only makes us stronger as a community, is that when you see people from different backgrounds and different abilities and different things, we learn more about ourselves and we learn more about our community and we learn more uh, that, that diversity makes uh, our, the places we live much more enriching. And so and I, this is the point that I, that I consistently bring home is that they consistently talk about is that the more we expose ourselves to new ideas and new and, 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 and new new backgrounds and meet new people, the more it becomes normal to know that everybody has their own story. Because like I said years ago, I mean the norm yeah. talking about the norm. You know, what is the norm anymore? The norm is putting a person away in an institution, mm -hmm. locking away the key. <clears throat> oh, you can't take care of them. You got to put them away. Yeah. So, but that's that's the whole point. Is that everybody needs to be integrated with each other, and it's good to have mm -hmm. it's good to have proceed like you have, you know, your own. It, that it's the same thing. It doesn't matter what religion you are or background, what country you're from, um, you know, what uh, what level of ability you have. Everybody should have the same amount of access and connections to their neighborhood and their community, and their neighbors, and everybody else. So. It's you know, and talking about the you know disability prejudice is one of the, is one of the last you know prejudices that we haven't really faced and talked about. You know, we talked about issues of we talked about issues of 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 you know uh, you know sexual orientation, race, um, gender, religion, and in different independent you know different ethnic backgrounds. But we also got to realize is that 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 prejudices and disabilities is something that we still have to address and the best way to address this is making sure that we make sure everybody no matter what your ability no matter as I say what your background everybody should feel safe and connected mm -hmm. and yeah. do things in their own community and and that's what self-advocacy and one of the points we talk about today that we talk about in our breakout sessions really focusing on advocacy self-advocacy we have um, uh, Katrina Hazel mm -hmm. who is who is now the um, Miss Wheelchair. Miss Wheelchair, Miss Wheelchair New York, and that's based off of, and that's, and she's the 2018 Miss Wheelchair New York, and they're going to be 2019. Her, no, 2018. The 2019 one is happening, I think. Oh, this I'm, month? I apologize. Yeah, uh, and and the biggest thing about that is about the Miss Wheelchair with Miss Wheelchair New York. It's being very, the the thing about Miss Wheelchair New York is very being very specific. It's not a beauty pageant. It's a, right. it, what it is, it's based off of what your abilities and what you're bringing to and what type of advocacy and <coughs> faci facilitation that you're doing to work within your community. Right. And that's what the judgment is on, and on that with the, the Miss Wheelchair New York. We also have the Connecticut Children's Medical Center coming in talking about mm. occupational therapy. They're going to be doing a, se they're doing a session. Uh, Story House 28, which is an agency. I've heard of them. Yeah, Storyhouse 28, they are the ones that we're, we worked with to uh, do our cerebral palsy book, uh, graphic novel anthology. Mm -hmm. And they are can coming in. Do you want to in. talk about th that? Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that later. And so, and what they're doing, they're coming in here talking about advocacy and storytelling mm -hmm. and how to actually tell your story, do some self advocacy work in, 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 in a comic book form, a graphic novel form. Which is very, it's, which is very popular these days. Kids are reading graphic novels. Kids are really reading illustrated books. Um, kids are reading the comic books, and a lot of this, and being able to tell your story in that mm -hmm. format, is really important. So they're going to be doing a breakout session on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we also have uh, Juliana Featherman, who is she's the director of, and she made this thing called Make uh, Making Authentic Friendships. Mm -hmm. She's making an app on how to reach out and make real friendships based off of people who have similar likes and interests not based off of well, people a dating site business. not well. necessarily a dating site it's like a, it's a you know f making authentic friendships and mm -hmm. based off of because what you do is you see people that work within this that might be getting um, s um, services within you know within a within mm -hmm. an agency model they're surrounded by more paid supports than they're, they're getting surrounded more by by paid supports than they are by uh, by natural supports and being able right. to reach out and find people that are some true right. friendships yeah. um, is is super important and 
Then we also have Rad Innovations coming in, and they're the ones that have a lot of things about adaptive cycling, mm -hmm. um, ways to get out about, and ways to uh, to uh, to be part of a community. adaptive cycling is a big thing, especially with tandem bikes and other. Yeah, and there's plenty, mm -hmm. and there's and they're going to be talking about all these ways. So it's and from a technology perspective, and then from a perspective of 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 being able to for, for people to connect so much easily, people that with how we are with with the internet and how technology and science yeah. is progressing, yeah. it's not it's. So you basically, know, your conference because it's a larger area, yeah. and you're having. Would you call it a conference or would you call it an expo? Because there is a disabilities expo. There is, and we go to that. We go to the abilities expo. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, abilities expo. And my, we my do point. have we do have twenty plus exhibitors as well that are going to be out there as well. So we do have some people who are actually there as d providing some exhibitor space. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as I said, we do have and also abled on air. Yeah. Uh, We'll, all, we'll, you know, we've sponsored. Yeah, and you are one of yeah. our sponsors this year, so we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have a, and we'll be showing some of your work as well there, uh, mm -hmm. as uh, with an exhibitor table. But yes, yeah, so, I mean, we're we're really excited about it. We got, we have, uh, our, and uh, as of this recording, we still have some time. But I think once this is put. What, that our early bird registration ends September 3rd. So I think by the time this airs, it'll be past that early bird registration, but, uh, or maybe not. And so, but after that, we are, we are our registrations are filling up. Um, we're Is it still, uh, are you still allowed to get sponsors uh, for your event, despite? It'll probably be a couple of weeks beforehand because then we wanna make sure at least it's in our, in our literature, in our brochures that the that it's if somebody's October. a sponsor. Yep, October yeah. October yeah, October seventh. Yeah, yeah, October seventh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, it, who are some of your sponsors this year besides us? Then with that we had I said we I mentioned Advanced Wheels is our platinum sponsor. Yeah. And please check them out. They do great stuff. They sell they're the, they're they're one of the premier agencies in out of Connecticut mm -hmm. that actually provide mobile uh, that provide uh, accessible vehicles mm -hmm. for people with disabilities. <coughs> uh, Are you having any wheelchair companies? Yeah, we do. We have Mobility Works is there. We're going to have them there. We uh, I'll have to check the list, but we have um, definitely we have Vermont Adaptive Sports is going to be there oh, as well. Oh, we had yeah, we had the one time at a picnic. I had them in kayaking and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, we we we've um, um, you know had some of your guests that that. That, that you've mentioned. Um, but yeah, how important is conferences like this besides, you know, uh, just how important is it to getting the word out for services for people with disabilities? I think it's really important. I think it's, and, and too, with, from, the, from the public perspective, it's important for people to know the importance of having conferences that are specialty in this yeah. sense. So from the public perspective, it's really important. What's also important is that for people to that, that you know, it gives, it gives people who have cerebral palsy <coughs> um, you know, a chance to learn more about how they can to do more advocacy. Mm -hmm. It gives them an opportunity to uh, to share their story very much, allow them to kind of to sit down and share their story, um, to help them out to be you know stronger self advocates, and all, it's also great for people who ha that work with people with cerebral palsy to be able to learn more about what what other resources are out there or what types of trainings that they might be able to do as well. So it's 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 a great. Right. And as I said, we get people that are coming back every year mm. um, to the point where they, it just means so much for them to, 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 you know, they make new friends the year before and they come back mm. and they're able to connect again with and seeing them again. Uh, and, that's, and that's really ultimately what we feel it's the most important thing that we, that we do that we can have people take away from is that they're able to, that they're able to make lifelong connections or that their <laughs> lives are changed based off of the people they've met for new networking or learning something new. So to go backwards for a minute, yeah. for those that don't know, um, what are the missions and goals of your agency? And for people that want to get involved, 
with your agency. Yeah. So our, our mission, our mission is to make sure that 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 ultimately that our job is to make sure people have more pay, have more natural supports in their lives and paid supports in their lives. We don't do congregate settings. We don't do segregated settings. Why? We truly believe it's not. We, we you don't you don't segregate everybody with glasses in one end of the town. You don't segregate everybody who no, is. No. We don't segregate everybody who has all that are hearing impaired to another side of the town. You don't segregate people that are all of one color or one right. or from or one race or background to one side Purple of the town. Purple people or yeah. So why would you segregate people who have an intellectual disability to to one certain specific area mm. um, to sequester them and make them not integrated into the community that they're a part of? Yeah, so. that makes sense. Yeah. How long has your agency been? We've been around for over thirty years. Wow. Okay, and yeah. this is your. This is your thirtieth year. Yeah. Like, no, oh, we're no, we're past thirty. We were thirty one last year at thirty one or thirty two now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> was your agency under a different name before Green Mountain Support? Because I know it was um, Sterling. Uh, yep, it was. It was under a different name for a few years. Yep, it mm -hmm. was called Sterling Area Service. Was it the same mission, or has the mission changed? No, yeah, it's probably it's always been the same. It's always been the same. We've been mm. very like very providing very person centered. Supports and uh, and and we're we're very proud of the work that we've we've done over the years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so is anyone from Green Mountain Support Services going to be there talking about what your agency provides? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we have yeah, um, we'll, we have at least between twenty or thirty people from our own agency coming yeah. down there because they're part of the process of of how how growing the program and how growing the conference mm -hmm. and uh, and and anybody that's been on that committee we've we've well, we make sure that we're able to provide them with all the support they they can to to, to have them come down to it right. as well yeah. Yeah. okay um, last yeah. question well second to last uh, being the fact that we're in this current administration yeah um, and services are being cut um, on a daily basis for people with special needs. What's one or several uh, things you could tell um, any political person that it's, you know, on how important services for people with special needs is? Or that's so I, I think what our job is as an agency is to be sure that, that to be very honest, mm -hmm. uh, politicians don't mm -hmm. listen to people that work for agencies no. because they think there might be a level of self-interest in saying what so ultimately what it comes down to is advocates self-advocates to tell them how important those services are to them because they could very easily say this is a great system that's what easy or they can say how it works now needs to be changed mm -hmm. but ultimately what it is is that our job is to make sure that we that we we support people to be their own to be self-advocates being able to give them that provide them with mm -hmm. that that support a lot of work that that both of you do here, I think, speaks volumes to that being able right. to be a voice and being able to. Because to without that. a voice, um, I'll give you a prime example. Twenty years, twenty plus years ago, yeah. when I created this type of media, news only gets a small amount. Yeah. Why not interview people for half an hour, forty minutes? You need to get the whole story, not just a half. <laughs> and so yeah, and, and ultimately yeah, it's that true. it's that that the voiceless never get never have the rights they deserve. So in, in being being sure to have have it, we have about and I can't remember off the, in Vermont I think it's maybe seven thousand people that have intellectual disabilities. If all seven thousand of those people are able to have to. To have a shared voice and do some advocacy and being able to help to to explain um, how they would prefer to be, you know, how they would prefer to what how they want their lives to be like and how they want things. Th those those are carry so much more voices, so much more weight than all the employees of of nonprofits or state agencies that get together and talk hmm. because it yeah. means so much more to having self advocates talk and that's what our job as mm. as an agency is, is making sure that people giving have giving a voice to those who can't yeah yeah pretty much well um, anything you want to mm. say um, well we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition it's always a pleasure having our sponsors stop by mm. and um, and 
<coughs> give new things. Is there any, besides your conference, is there any, anything new that's happening with Green Mountain Support Services? I mean, we are, we're doing a lot of uh, in-house training. We're training some a lot, a lot uh, two more people into being person-centered thinking skills wow. trainers. And so which will give us the, uh, give us as Green Mountain Support Services putting our values to work, mean, meaning that we truly believe that we work with the person, not a diagnosis. We work with mm. people to ensure that they have full lives um, and that they're treated with dignity and respect. And so with that said, we're gonna have the most people trained in person-centered mm -hmm. thinking wow. um, in the state mm -hmm. out of our agency. Uh, we are also, we are also, as I said, the, the, big, the, the big thing is, our, as I said, our, our Cerebral Palsy Conference. Um, we're also having a, a we also have a, a pretty robust and strong brain injury program. Mm -hmm. and Which we you have been on for that. <laughs> yeah, and we're in the nursing are, program. And mm -hmm. Yep, a very, a very strong nursing program wow. uh, to support people. And this is what I love about our nurses. Uh, nurses are amazing, is that, that they make it clear they work with people, not patients. Mm -hmm. Patients, patients, uh, in people in first, first, not well. But then, if you work that we work with people, we don't work with patients because they're not in hospitals. So, and working with mm -hmm. pe that that people need supports. Just because you're taking a medication doesn't mean you're a patient. And to, I'm, I'm sorry for yeah. one of the main in terms of words. Yeah. Right. This is a big thing. Years ago, there used to be client, consumer, yep. I don't like those words. Why not call this person? Yep, yep. And then we what just you, say, what is your take we on just say that? that? Yeah, exactly. We, we always make it a point to say that the people we provide services for. Mm. We make it a very, make it very point, because as I say, you know, when you label, when you label, you create a them. So mm -hmm. when, Explain. So for instance, if you say the the man with cerebral palsy, or no, but even that, but just you know, it's putting. He uh, has. But cerebral. if you if you if you create if you create a term where you you are announcing that the person is different than you, you then created a them instead of an us. So yeah. so the point is is that even in, even in our mission statement that we say we empower our neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. We don't say. We empower clients with disabilities, or we mm -hmm. empower people with the people with disabilities, because all of a sudden you are now creating a segregation in the right, terms. Yeah. But if you say empowering our neighbors, you've already included everybody together. Right. Yeah. So that's why that mission oh. statement is so powerful. You know, empowering our neighbors with disabilities to be. So it's nothing. They're, they're not. We're not talking about people who are far away. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the, we're talking about we're talking about empowering our neighbors with disabilities right. to be at home in the community because there's a sense of ownership that we all belong. There's nothing, you know, right. that uh, you know inside the neighborhood. Everybody who lives in that neighborhood belongs to that neighborhood. So, and it's up to people on the individual basis to decide whether they want to be a part of their own neighborhood. Right. But it's not up to us sure. to make that decision to say you don't belong here. Everybody who lives on your street belongs on that street. Mm. Everybody who lives in your town belongs in that town. True. And to say yeah. that, and to yeah, say it's that, the same thing. Like years ago, they used to have. It's called <coughs> NIMBY, not yeah. in my backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. It, it, um, I sat on a couple community boards. Why can't a, a, a group home be in in an area? Don't be scared of a particular group. Yeah, just because they have this, and, and that's something that two of the Greenmount Support Service we don't do we don't do group homes. We we don't believe in it because the very fact is like say hypothetically speaking, you're in Burlington and you say all right we're going to put everybody with autism in this one building, boom all of a sudden it's called the autism house and people start labeling you with autism instead of labeling well, people, people as with oh you, yeah or oh look at you you love right, to right. you love to collect rocks this guy is is you know employee of the year at the local supermarket or whatever. So you people have their own identities in there. But when you start labeling and putting segregating people based off of a disability, um, it's a form of prejudice. Well, again, we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able to Um If you want to get in touch 
was able to on air to sponsor um, the Cerebral Palsy Conference. Where can they so go come and turn? to, to gmssi.org? Um, all of our information is on there. Our, our Cerebral Palsy Conference is uh, is uh, there's a big picture on the front. Mm -hmm. Click on that and get all your information on okay. there. And, and it's, it's never too. Uh, uh, it's never too uh, late to sponsor the uh, Cerebral Palsy Conference, because we did. And um, we would like to thank uh, Green Mountain Support Services for everything <coughs> they've done for Ableton On Air and continue to do for the, uh, the special needs community. Uh, this puts an end to this edition of Ableton On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. But before we go, uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, uh, OSIM Foods, and Ala Israel. This puts an end again to able to able to on air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major support for Ableton On Air, Green Mountain Support Services, to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits.